Chapter 6. You've got to be calm, Martha. You've got to be grown up about this and put it all in perspective and not start jumping to conclusions. Martha closed her eyes, thankful that another exhausting day of school was over. There were so many things she needed to know, but before she'd been able to ask Blake about them, lunch break had ended and he promised to call her tonight. Now she glanced at Connor's hands on the steering wheel and fought down a surge of anger. Oh, Dad, Martha muttered to herself, why did you ever get me into this? She pressed her nose flat against the window and stared out into black empty, empty nothingness as the car sped home. In the back bedroom, closest to the woods, her bedroom? No wonder I had that awful feeling. No wonder. She hadn't been able to get it out of her mind since her talk with Blake. Obscene phone calls, pranks, a fire, Elizabeth's terror in the last few seconds of her life. It was all so unbelievable, so terribly overwhelming, that Martha could hardly stand to think about it. And yet, how can I not think about it after all the things that have happened? By the time they reached the house, she still hadn't spoken a word to Connor, and he hadn't seemed the least bit bothered by her silence. While he tossed his books on the hall table and went about turning on lights, Martha sagged against the wall facing the stairs like an old enemy. I can't go up there right now. I just can't. Connor disappeared into the kitchen, and a moment later, she heard him whistling as he rattled pots and pans. Dragging her feet, she finally followed him and sank down at the table. I hope you cook better than your mom, she said. The look Connor threw her was reproachful. Everyone cooks better than my mom. Martha hesitated and then announced, I found out something today, so it would seem. Connor didn't even look up. Now he was chopping onions on the cutting board. What's that supposed to mean? It means I don't want to fight with you, even though you're sure in the mood for it. Martha's mouth dropped open in surprise. For a moment, she couldn't think of anything to say. Blake Chambers told you about Elizabeth Bedford's murder? Connor went on placidly. Do you like your chili with or without beans? I, Martha stared at him annoyed. What were you doing, spying on us? You were the only two people sitting out there on the bleachers in the rain in the middle of the football field. You weren't that hard to miss. Well then, how did you know what we were talking about? Martha demanded. How could you have known that? In spite of what you think, I did happen to notice your wonderful mood on the way home. He wiped his knife on a paper towel, and Martha shuddered. And I did some detective work of my own. You did? I cut class and went down to the newspaper office this morning. I read some pretty unpleasant stuff. Martha sniffed. Well, you don't know half of it, probably. Not all the really important details. Connor gave a vague nod and started slicing cheese. No, probably not. She waited, but when he didn't say anything more, she gave a loud sigh. All right, I guess I should tell you. Even though you sure weren't interested in anything on the way home, this time Connor sighed. He put down the knife again, cleared, cleaned his hands on the dish rag, and turned and looked at her. I figured you'd talk about it when you were ready. How much cheese do you want? Martha met his stare for a long moment and then grudgingly dropped her eyes. I knew this was a horrible house from the very beginning. I knew it. Okay, tell me all those really important details. By the time Martha finished her story, the chili was simmering on the stove, but eating, for the time being, was forgotten. She repeated the story exactly as she had heard it from Blake, and Connor sat across from her, elbows propped on the table, chin resting on hands, eyes lowered. His face showed no emotion, even when Martha recalled the grisly scene of the murder. Connor just listened, his face unmoved. Connor, are you in a trance or what? Have you even heard a single word I've said? She waited expectantly, the silence lengthening between them. Something creaked in the hallway, and she glanced nervously toward the door. Connor? But they're not sure it was him, Connor said. How can they be so sure it was him? Of course it was him. Martha stared, her calm snapping. He was crazy and jealous, and he killed Elizabeth in my bedroom. Connor, we shouldn't even be here. This house is bad luck. It's evil and dangerous. I don't want to live in a house that's supposed to be haunted where someone was killed. Everybody talks about it. They all act like I'm weird and bad luck. I'll never have any friends. Nobody will ever come out here to see us. Connor lifted his head slowly and looked at her. You're talking like someone who believes in ghosts. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. I, her voice faltered. All the coincidences, the things happening around here, my room, the phone call, that scarecrow had a knife in him, and that fire last night. Oh, so now you don't believe I started it? 
This isn't funny, Martha's hands clasped the edge of the table. Maybe the house made you start it. She broke off, her eyes fixed on his almost pleading. Her voice came out small and tight. Well, did you? No, Connor said, I didn't. I don't believe you, Martha told him, and Connor rolled his eyes. I don't know what to believe. I'm not staying in that room another night. You don't have to, Connor said agreeably. I'll change rooms with you if you want. Really? Of course. He pulled himself up to his lean height and went over to the stove. We'd better eat this stuff before it boils away. Oh, Connor, how can you even think about eating at a time like this, Martha groaned. This whole thing is just so awful. Connor regarded her a moment and then replaced the lid on the pot. It's not awful. It's perfectly natural. Natural? Oh, right. It's natural that someone was murdered in the room where you're sleeping. It happens every day. I'm not talking about the murder, Connor looked away, and Martha wondered if he was trying to hide a smile. I'm talking about the house. And what could be natural about this horrible house? Connor remained unruffled. When something so, so tragic happens in a house, it's natural that all those high-charged emotions should be, well, absorbed by it. By the rooms, the atmosphere, sort of like tangible memories. So what does that mean? It's the bad memories haunting our house? Connor stared at the stove, at the low blue flame sputtering on the burner. It means, yes, bad memories are haunting our house. Is that why, why my room is so cold? Because it remembers? Probably yes. So what about the fire last night? Connor hesitated. He averted his eyes, and Martha had that uneasy feeling that he was holding something back from her. It could have been an accident, right? Martha insisted. You could have just forgotten, left it on, and gone to bed. He gave a vague nod. Maybe I had my mind on other things, he murmured. You always have your mind on other things, and you don't really believe what you just said, and you know it, Martha challenged him. And next you're going to tell me the phone call was just a joke and that the wind blew the scarecrow up in the tree, and my closet is just drafty, and there's absolutely nothing else in the house with us but bad memories, and... She shook her head in exasperation and hurried up to her room. For a long while she lay on her bed, her mind turning, what was happening? She was terrified being in this house, in this room, and maybe all those things really were coincidences, but Connor was holding something back. She could feel it, but what? And Dennis was dead, and she was in the room where he murdered Elizabeth in an insane rage. Something cracked against the window pane. Martha jumped up and switched off her light, edging cautiously toward the window. She could hear the wind wailing, a long mournful sound, and for one split second, clouds struggled apart, splashing the ground with pale, pale moonlight. The trees arced back and forth in a slow kind of frenzy, straining her eyes. Martha saw something on the ground below her window and realized a branch must have fallen and knocked against the house. She closed her eyes in relief, a headache beginning to pound behind her temples. I should have eaten something. That was so stupid. I haven't really eaten anything all day. The phone rang. With a surge of relief, Martha remembered that Blake was going to call, and she raced for the phone before Connor could answer it. Hello? Hello, Elizabeth, the voice whispered, and it wasn't Blake who drew a long, raspy breath and let it out again, breathing, breathing, while her heart beat like a frantic wing in her throat. Who, who is this? It wasn't Blake who began to laugh and then suddenly went quiet, the awful, terrible silence going on and on forever. Hello, Martha cried. Who is this? You're dead, Elizabeth. Trick or treat.